Okay, go ahead. Who's going to make the first presentation? I want to buy something. <laughs> but only if it's made in America, right? Amen. Well, I want to thank you all. And Michael was a supporter of ours right from the beginning, which I really appreciate. It's good to see you here. Yes, sir. That's thank fantastic. You. Yes, sir. And uh, I actually bought a couple of pillows, and they're very good. I have to tell you, they're great. I've slept so much better ever since. <laughs> so thank you very much, Michael. Good afternoon and welcome to the White House. We're here today to continue our celebration of American manufacturing as part of Made in America Week. The leaders and innovators around this table create the products that fill our homes, defend our nation, and enrich our lives. And each one of these products proudly carries the label Made in the USA. Do you remember in the old days? We used to say Made in the USA. That was when we really had a great pride in our product. And you do, but unfortunately, we've lost a little something, but we're gaining it back very quickly. You see the stock market hit a new high. Uh, jobs are the lowest they've been. The best, uh, best jobs report we've had in, I think, 16 years. Uh, unemployment numbers, fantastic, how we're doing. But we're also going to take care of the 95 million people out there that aren't working. And uh, we have to remember that's not really part of the statistic. I've been talking about that for a long time. And when we got those great reports, I kept saying, you know, those numbers, whether it's 4.2, 4.3, I said, for a long time, they don't matter. But now I accept those numbers very proudly. I say they do matter. But we're doing very well with the jobs and the jobs reports, and we're doing very well with companies. We're really moving along. From day one, my administration has been fighting to bring back our manufacturing jobs and to crack down on foreign countries that cheat. Get a lot of them. We will end the theft of American prosperity, and we will stand up for our companies, our factories, and our workers. Is that okay with you, Michael? Good? That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Made in America is more than a label or a product, and it's just uh, something so important to us. It's a stamp of excellence. It's a badge of honor and a tribute to the tremendous skill of the working men and women who design and build these incredible masterpieces and different products of all types. When American workers have a level playing field, they cannot be beaten. They have not had a level playing field in a long time. But you see what's happening. And step by step, we've gotten rid of regulations, and a lot more are coming. We have some statutory requirements where we're not allowed to do it until certain dates, but they're coming as fast as those dates come. We've opened it up, and it's made a big difference for the farmer, for the home builder, for so many, and for the manufacturers. That's why we want to ensure the integrity of the Made in America label. My administration is committed to working with the private sector to ensure the protection of Made in America and the label through efforts like certification, greater transparency, and stricter enforcement efforts by agencies like the Federal Trade Commission. We will have zero tolerance for illegal counterfeiting, piracy, theft, or intellectual property. And they really, they take our intellectual property like we're a bunch of babies, but no longer. And false claims that a product is made in America. And as time goes by, the value of Made in America is going to be greater and greater, so you're going to see more and more of this. There was a time when people didn't want to use that name, and they wouldn't take that name. Now they're taking it, and that's because it's become — we've become very proud of it again. Around the world, the Made in America label is the gold standard for craftsmanship, quality, and artistry. And that is one more reason why me — we have to protect it. I mean, we have to protect it. Uh, not for you, not for me, but for your children, for your grandchildren, because that's what's happening. So we must protect it from illegal theft and from abuse. Made in America movement is growing rapidly under my administration, and we're more determined than ever to protect our jobs, our industry, and our workers. Every day, we are putting America first. And as you know, during our campaign, I had a slogan. A few of you may have heard it. It's called, Make America Great Again. 
Did you ever hear that slogan? I think so. My turn. Right? And I want to thank our great Michael. Thank you for being here, by the way. And Secretary Acosta is here. And uh, you have done a fantastic job in a very short period of time. And I know you're going to say a few words, so why don't you go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. President, thank you, and thank you for your leadership. Um, while, while we were uh, waiting for you to walk in, we had short conversations. And I just wanted to uh, tell you a few things that, that I heard from your guests here today. Uh, American workers are the best in the world. American workers are passionate. Made in America matters because when products are made in America, Americans care about what they're doing. They care about the product because they know the product impacts American lives. And, uh, and so those are examples of what your guests here told me, and I think examples of, of why Made in America is so important uh, to this nation, to the economy, and, and to this nation's workers. And so thank you for your leadership on this issue. Thank you very much. So what label do you like better, Made in America or Made in the USA? Tell me. Think about it. What do you like better, Made in America or Made in the USA? Made in the USA. Made in the USA. What do you like, Secretary? How do you feel? I think Made in America is, uh, is, is what we've been talking about. It's uh, known throughout the world, and Made in America works. It used to be Made in the USA, I think, the uh, label. It was on a car. Do you know, uh, they were telling me that in Czechoslovakia and other communist countries many years ago, they were so proud of a car if it was made in the United States. They used to take a single dollar, and they'd scotch tape it up to their windshield just to show an American dollar. And that was a long time ago, but that's what they used to do. And maybe somebody's going to be doing that in the future. How do you feel, Michael? Made in the USA, made in America? I feel made in the USA, um, but you know, they, I've done both. But my ads have all been made in the USA. But uh, um, it's, the way, it's the way I feel. I, I just did How many pillows did you make last year in the USA? Uh, 10 million. No, it's, I mean, yeah, can you imagine? Year, 30 million so far. <laughs> 30 million since. That's fantastic. Yeah. I know it's amazing. I heard it's amazing. Peter, what do you like? I love Made in America because it fits in with our Buy American, Hire American, the two simple rules of the Trump administration. Okay. What is the media like? Do you like Made in America or Made in the USA, Steve? What do you like, Made in America or Made in the USA? Huh? Either way. They're so quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> well, you make your decision. Uh, I think specifically, Made in the USA was what they had. Made in the USA, but either is great, or both. I mean, you could really go both, although I think we'd probably like to settle. What do you like, Mike? I, I like Made in America. I, that's just what I've always thought. And, you know, make America great again, you got to make it in America. And, and I like that. I like okay, that go. good. Very good. Are you going to show me some things? Let's go. Do you want to start, Michael? What's that? I think they're going to show some of the product. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, this is my pillow. I have uh, um, over 1,500 employees now, and I'm very proud that every part, even the cotton, is grown in the USA. And uh, my call center is right outside my door. I think that's another thing, having all them employed here. They all, uh, they, everyone has a passion. It's like a family when you have everybody employed here. And I'll tell you, the businesses, I read, I had a thing once where I heard a snowmobile company that left uh, the United States for overseas. You know how many companies follow that company? You have the bolts that make the bolts, the fasteners, the seats, all these things. And with my, with my pillow or with any companies made here, you affect so many other companies. So it just spreads. It's just amazing. Great job. I'm proud of you. I'm Representative Eric Paulson from Minnesota, and I sleep on a my pillow every night, and I have the privilege. <laughs> of representing a lot of Michael's uh, workers right home in Minnesota. And a great representative, too. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Stephanie McDonald, and I am the co-founder of Authenticity 50. We are the only company making 100% seed-to-stitch lux bedding here in America. As we like to say, here we go. As we like to say, we're bringing it back to America, one sheet set at a time. And we sure do hope to 
have our bedding in the White House one day. <laughs> Sounds like a very good idea. Yeah. And I'm Jimmy McDonald. I'm the other co-founder of Authenticity 50, but uh, let's be honest, she's the boss. <laughs> I've learned that much. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Secretary Acosta, thank you so much for doing this. This is a remarkable event and it's showing true leadership for making America great again. We really appreciate what you're doing. I'm David Costello. I serve as Executive Director of the Warrior Protection and Readiness Coalition. We are the companies that manufacture your body armor, your ballistic helmets, your combat clothing, your combat boots for our armed forces. And all of that is 100% American made from the fiber forward. So we employ thousands of people around the United States in every state in this nation. And one of the things we want to talk about today is the federal government does not buy all American made products in some of the agencies. We've been working with Dr. Navarro on an effort where to get the Department of Homeland Security to buy American made products. This is a Border Patrol uniform uh, that's manufactured in Mexico and we think perhaps it might be a better idea to have these made in the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Matt Collig. I'm out of Hudson, Ohio. I own uh, leaf filter gutter protection. We uh, manufacture and install uh, leaf filter gutter protection, so it keeps all the leaves and debris out of your gutters. So we employ over 1,300 people out of 38 offices all over the country, and um, they also wanted me to mention that I own a NASCAR team. So I don't know anything more American than leaf filter gutter protection and NASCAR. So, so let me ask you, the, the width of a gutter, it changes a little bit, so you make different widths? It does change. So we, we do What does it go to, small side, big side? What was it go to on a house? We do three inch, and then we do, uh, uh, it goes up to eight inches. So one hmm. of the things that we're doing is we're developing new products to be able to fit some of the gutter styles up in the Northwest. I have an office up in Seattle, but as far as like Oregon and Northern California, we're not able to go there yet, just because of our product uh, doesn't fit those type of gutters. But uh, we're developing products. We manufacture our product out of uh, Plainwell, Michigan, which is north of Kalamazoo, and uh, and we're we're going to open a plant uh, down in Louisville, Kentucky. That's so, great. Two great places. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my name is Mark Gracie, president and founder of Bully Tools. We manufacture rakes, shovels, hose. We have a product line of about 200 products. Our first factory is in Steubenville, Ohio. We're about to announce in the next couple months the opening of a second factory, the location to be finalized. Um, feeling a little bit like Forrest Gump today with a uh, clip posted on Facebook. I was here on Monday as well, so I've been posting, uh, feel like Forrest Gump. I'm, I'm back in the White House again. That's great. So is business better since we got elected since November 8th? My confidence in the future is much stronger under this administration, and that's why I'm investing in um, opening up a second that's factory. That's great. A lot of people feel that. And, and by the way, with stepping on his message, uh, if the GSA would stop buying uh, uh, foreign-made shovels, maybe I'd open a third factory. Well, we're going to have to look at that. That's a good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Eight years look at, ago, I let's look at that, Peter. Yeah. That's why we're here today. Okay. Good. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello. My name is Sarah Vani. I'm CEO of Okabashi Brands. We're an American-made footwear company. And we actually make the most comfortable flip-flops and sandals and welcome you all to try a pair. And we're based in Buford, Georgia. Thank you very much. Thank Beautiful. You. Hi, I'm Kimberly Falkenhayn. I'm the um, president of Okabashi Brands, so I'm the other half of the tag team here, so also representing the most comfortable flip-flops. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Representative uh, Claudia Tenney from upstate New York, fellow New Yorker. I, we are so grateful for your leadership and that you're the president and our first Republican president since Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, I want to tell you, I had the great fortune of touring Cheryl Manufacturing last year, the, a, a factory that was taken over by these two phenomenal entrepreneurs. And uh, at your inaugural speech, uh, I listened and I, I wrote down something really important that you said. You said, Americans know a different reality as they see rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape. And I typed it in on my cell phone because we couldn't have any papers out there. And I thought, this is exactly what we have at Cheryl Manufacturing. And these two gentlemen have reunited, and they are the only flatware manufacturer in the nation. 
and we are, they have uh, been approved for contracting, but I want to just say that I do have an, a, a bill that I've put in that we'd love to have your support on. It's called the Spoons Act. It took a little work to come up with that. It's Support Procurement of Our Nation's Stainless Steel Act. Good. And uh, we'd love to have Good. your support so we can continue Good. to have Cheryl I'll Manufacturing thrive. And we'd love to have you visit Cheryl. They have an old 20, uh, there was a parking lot with over 2,400 cars where, that were once uh, NIDA employees. And there's a lot of room there for Marine One to stay. That's great. Thank, Thank you Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. We'd love to have you there. Thank you Thank so you. much. And grateful to the Vice President Thank as you. well. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Greg Owens, and this is Matt Roberts. We are co-founders, uh, president, and CEO of Cheryl Manufacturing. Our brand is Liberty Tabletop. We sell flatware. We are the only flatware manufacturer in the United States. That's incredible. What, what happened? So well, what happened? Every, everybody else went overseas, cheap, ch chasing cheap labor. Yeah. I'm not surprised, but it is really somewhat surprising when you say the only. That's that's a hell of a statement. And our slogan is 100% made in America. Yeah, so we I think like it's that. great. Uh, we use American steel melted and manufactured right here in the United States. Great job. Mike, thank would you. you like to say something, Vice President? Well, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to welcome all these uh, great job creators and entrepreneurs. I think, I think you all can tell uh, that this country has a president who loves people who make things and who grow things. And um, I just want to assure you that um, whatever we call it, Made in America, is not a slogan. Uh, it's a mission for this president and this administration, and we're not going to stop until we make Made in America great again. Thank you, Mike. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Dr. Navarro, Secretary Acosta, thank you for having me here. I'm Carter Beard. I'm the president and CEO of Annan Flagmakers. We make American flags, state, international flags. We were founded in New York City in uh, 1847. I'm the sixth generation uh, president. We have approximately 700 employee flag makers making our product in our factories in South Boston, Virginia, Cobbs Creek, Virginia, Coshocton, Ohio, and Gillardsville, Pennsylvania, just a few miles from the Hill School in Pottstown. That was good, good school. By the way, we have the governor of Indiana here. Where is Eric? Where is he? He's around here something. There he is. Can't miss him. Great job. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Eric. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Mr. Vice President, thank you so much for declaring this week Made in America Week and helping to celebrate the small brands making it in America. My name is Margarita Mendoza. I am the founder of the Made in America movement, and we believe in order for Americans to make it in America, we have to make it in America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation, Mr. President. My name is Kurt Euler. I'm the chairman of the Maine America Movement, and um, it's an honor to be part of the, not just the, the, this organization, but, but your movement you have here. Uh, we represent uh, 20,000 American-made companies, the mothers, the fathers that work for those companies, and we're honored to do that and to be here today. Thank you. Great job. Mr. President. Third District of Oklahoma. Yes. Hi, Frank. I represent uh, Robert here, and I work for him. And we are known as Americans around the world, so once we reclaim our markets at home, we need to move our American products into the world again, too. Right. Thank you, Frank. I'm Rob Flory. I'm the CEO and founder of Blank Slate Coasters. And uh, although we don't have a bill in place yet, I put it in New York for the silver. Um, I hope we're working on one. We just got back from a Made in America event two weeks ago at Walmart, where they turned our company from 200,000 coasters to 212,000 a month. So they're doing a great job with Made in America as well, and uh, we're just delighted to be here. And we're out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Well, thank you very much. Great to have you. Mr. President, uh, my name is uh, Greg McGuire from uh, Revision. I'd like to thank you very much for your support of American manufacturers, Mr. Vice President, Secretary Costa, Dr. Navarro, and we really do appreciate that. I'd like to introduce our CEO, Thank you, Mr. President. It's great to be here. My name is Jonathan Blanche. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Revision Military. We are the developers, designers, and manufacturers of the world's best protective equipment for the world's best military uh, and law enforcement globally. Um, recently, we won a U.S. Army contract for the next generation helmet. This is 24% lighter weight than the current helmet. We think it's going to save a lot of lives. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. 
Good afternoon, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Matt Bell. I'm from Northeast Pellets. We're located in rural Ashland, Maine. We manufacture wood pellets uh, for heating, uh, for residential, commercial, and institutional heating. Uh, they're available in 25, 40 pound bags, as well as one ton sacks and loose bulk. We have a 40 pound bag here on display. And all of our fiber is purchased from local sawmills right in the greater Ashland area. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, I'm Sean Bondowat, president of the Brownwell Company based in Los Angeles. We are the oldest manufacturer of kitchenware and housewares products in the United States, founded in 1819. We produce a full line of handcrafted copper products, like this copper cup, and a full line of kitchenware and bakeware items, including colanders, uh, frying pans, cookie sheets, and more. Uh, we have two manufacturing facilities, one in Vermont and one in uh, Indiana. And as a company that's been in business for 200 years, it's estimated that one in four American households owns a Bromwell product. Thank you. And Mike Kelly, our friend, in 1819, that's a, that's a pretty old company. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> I'll tell you what, these are all great manufacturers, these are great, great Americans. People. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. President, so good to be with you again. And I, I know with, with Vice President Pence, we sat together uh, my first term in Congress. I was on foreign affairs with him. But I got the best time of my life, and all the 69 years was the summer of last year when we got to campaign and we rocked the Keystone State. We you did. were able to do. Thank you. You brought it home. I, I got to tell you, what you were able to do was absolutely incredible. And so uh, I brought with me today uh, a piece of legislation. This is a jobs bill. It's mm -hmm. called the Invent and Manufacture in America. And I'm, I think that most of us around the table, we're so tired of coming up with innovation and we come up with these wonderful conceptions, but we drive these folks offshore and then we blame them for leaving. You say, well, I, I would have stayed if you'd left me stay home. But this piece right here, Mr. President, I'm gonna pass it down to you. Sure. This, is, this is a piece that's gonna bring all those jaws back home and we use carrots instead of sticks. We're gonna make America great again every single day, but I gotta tell you, since the morning of, uh, of November the 9th, Getting through November the 8th was great, but the morning of November the 9th, the skies have never been bluer, the winds have never been stronger in our back, and it's all thanks to you. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for the privilege and honor to be here. Uh, my name is John DeArmit. I'm a President and Chief, Chief Operating Officer of Channel Lock Incorporated. You got it. We make uh, our, our genuine channel lock pliers back in Meadville, Pennsylvania. We have about 325 full-time associates that, that really work hard every day making the products. And uh, we think that tools like this will help you make, make America great again. That's a great product. It's a beautiful product. Believe it or not, I used to do this a lot. I love it. I love mechanical things, but this is really, really beautiful. High quality. Thank you very much. Doesn't get any better. Thank you. a lot you. of people that work hard doing that. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. So, folks, I know you're going to stay around for a little while with my people, but I appreciate you being here, and we're supportive of you totally, and Made in America is great. Made in the USA is great. And we, uh, we're behind you all the way. We're behind you all the way. And am I allowed to put this in the museum? It's got my name on it. I figure you can't. Who else is going to want it, right? <laughs> but that is really something. I mean, the product we make in this country, uh, people don't get it. It's great. But now we're going to put you on that level playing field. And that's what you need, and nobody's going to beat you. Once you have the level playing field, nobody is going to beat you. Thank you very much.